Kia ora koutou, and welcome to Good Shepherd Church here in Balmoral, Auckland, as we celebrate the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. A special welcome to those of you who are joining by Shine TV. The presider at this Mass is our parish priest, Monsignor Bernard Kiley. Let us now stand and sing together our opening hymn, Sing a New Song. Friends, peace be with you. I too welcome those of you who will be joining us from Shine on Shine TV. It's interesting, this past week, but three people have stopped me in the streets and one on uh, my walk through Cornwall Park who said, we watch Shine TV with uh, our parents or, uh, or with somebody. Thank you for what you do. So for those of you who are at home, know that uh, we hold you in our love and prayer as we pray this Sunday. As we gather, we acknowledge the call to holiness. We acknowledge God who is love. And the call to love God and our neighbour as ourselves. For the times we miss the mark, we acknowledge our need of his grace, his peace, his mercy. Lord Jesus, you teach us wisdom and you write your truth in our inmost heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out upon your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd, leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us praise God as we sing. Glory to God. 
in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And as we pray, let us be mindful of the intentions we place before the Lord this day. The people we carry in our hearts the events in our world that indeed need our prayer, especially for peace. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. For we make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, he who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people. May you and your children and your children's children fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together Psalm 17. I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my saviour. My God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. The Lord is worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. Long life to the Lord, my rock. Praise be to the God who saves me. He has given me great victories to his King and shown his love for his anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. 
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The priests of the first covenant were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But Jesus holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath which came later than the law appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? And Jesus replied, The first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying, He is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I've commented before, but isn't it significant that God gave us one mouth and two ears? What's he saying to us about how he has created us? One of the most important words in the liturgy today, particularly the readings, is listen. And I was very intrigued as two and a bit year old uh, Thomas in the front row repeated us uh, as, we respond, as we responded to the first reading with the psalm, I love you, Lord, with all my strength. And he said it 
after you'd all, we'd all finished. And I thought, good on you, Thomas, listening. Good boy. Isn't it amazing how we pass the faith on? It's absorbed. In the uh, readings today, uh, we hear the Shema presented to us. It's a very ancient Hebrew prayer that in uh, some uh, Jewish circles is prayed three times a day, a little like the Angelus. I will love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my being, with all my strength. That's how uh, they uh, weave spirituality into the day, just every now and then just stopping and saying, God, you are with us. We praise you. Do not abandon me. Grace me always. In the gospel, we have... uh, Someone come up to Jesus and say, what is the greatest of the laws? And he quotes this, but he also combines it with another law, bringing the two together. That you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul. And you shall love others as you love yourself. And it's interesting that these three dimensions, love of God, love of others, and love of self are all connected. Because if one of the strands or the relationships is somehow stressed or broken, it must affect the others. So if you've just had a God Almighty row in the car park and got into the church steaming, and remember I come from a family of six kids, so there would be eight of us, I often would wonder how did mum and dad still have faith some days, but you're sitting there steaming. Part of what we do at the beginning of Mass is, Lord, have mercy on me, as we try somehow, honestly, bring everything, every dimension of our lives and place it before the Lord, especially our strained relationships and broken ones. If we're on the receiving end of, uh, of comments that aren't particularly nice, when we look in the mirror in the morning, we can sometimes uh, think, oh, that's touched me, it's hurt me deeply. So again, part of what we're called to reflect on today, I guess, is this holistic approach to spirituality that doesn't compartmentalise God to up there or here, what we do at church, but is a part of every breath that we, that we take every relationship we're involved in, whether or not it's at the supermarket counter or overtaking uh, on the motorway or sitting here in church, we are here for and with each other. I uh, often invite you to pray for those alongside you or in front of you or behind you because you never know what people are going through. And on a Sunday as we gather as a family, I'm often thankful for the prayers that we pray communally as brothers and sisters before the Lord. I know I'm not on my own. We are family. So again, think about those around you. Don't just be here for yourself, but uh, be here for each other. As we uh, think about the readings too, we might uh, acknowledge that word, that command, listen, hear, O Israel. And we might think about the routines of our lives and how we fill them, because although technology is a great gift, a huge gift, how many of us are sort of, kind of, nearly, maybe, perhaps addicted to picking up the phone and scrolling? How tempting it is to, um, to plug into the technologies of today in our free time. And if there's one thing about what we do on a Sunday is that we take time out. And hopefully none of you are on Facebook or Instagram at the moment. (laughs) But rather you're present. And if you're dreaming about uh, what's happening in your life or uh, or what, you know, what's for lunch or what's happening this week, that's fine because we bring it all as family before God. And we allow this time to stop and listen. The challenge is to try and do it daily, to try and take some time, and I know it's a huge challenge for families or if you're under pressure at work, just to go for a walk and say, this 15 minutes, Lord, is for you. To turn your phone on and your timer on and just sit in silence for 10 minutes. 
just see what we can do so that we might listen to what the voice of God might be saying to us here, now, but also in our daily lives. What's the beauty of creation saying to us as spring unfolds? What's in our hearts as we reflect on it? Hopefully, gratitude. The uh, Synod of Bishops has just recently finished in Rome, and uh, Pope Francis called together a rather unique Synod of Bishops that included a cross-section of the church, men and women, clergy, religious, lay people, young and old. And he has invoked a process of listening, which is quite countercultural when you think about what's happening, especially politically in the world, to say uh, nothing of those regions of the world that are under a constant threat of warfare and aggression. But Pope Francis has gathered this group of, of people in Rome to listen. They've sat at mixed tables of 10, and uh, prayer is a very big part of it. They are called to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And then on various topics, each of the 10 people at a table shares their thoughts. Then there's more time. Then they go into a second round of, of speaking, but it is saying out loud what you've heard others say. And again, it's quite countercultural because you know what it's like when somebody's talking to you and you're really busy thinking about, oh yes, it's happened to me too, you know, giving your own response, that you're almost step into a zone where you're not listening. You're too sort of quick, we're too quick to think, oh yes, this is my experience. But that second phase is uh, reflective in the sense that you have been listening to what has been said and then you repeat what has been said not commenting, just repeating, so that the truth uh, may uh, emerge. And again, more prayer, discernment with the Holy Spirit. Politically, we are seeing situations, and I won't name countries, where just missiles seem to be being fired. And uh, situations that occur where, where if somebody disagrees with me, they are automatically my enemy. And we have a touch of it emerging in this land too. So if anything that we hear in the readings today might be the command to listen respectfully and reverently to what God is saying to us, to our church, to our world, to listen prayerfully to uh, the voice of God within us, but also within each other, and walk humbly and gently with each other under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I've uh, often said that the most important key in the uh, computer keyboard is the space bar. Don't use the space bar and just type. Your text is really hard to decipher. But the space bar makes sense of it all. Press the space bar. Listen. Hear, O Israel. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love each other as we love God so that we might look in the mirror and acknowledge that we too are made in the image of God and we might love ourselves so that we too may be disciples of God's love. Listen. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. 
From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us place our prayers before the Lord. Let us pray that we may have the courage and conviction to love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul, with all our mind and strength, and our neighbours as we love ourselves. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that we may take time out to listen for the voice of God speaking to us in our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for Pope Francis and all who have gathered in Rome for the recent synod. May the Holy Spirit be at work in their midst. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for peace in our world. We pray for all the millions of innocent people who are affected by war especially in the nations of the Middle East and Ukraine and Russia. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who struggle to make ends meet in our city. May we be generous in our support of those in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are looking for work. May they be successful in their endeavours to find meaningful employment. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have lost loved ones recently. May they know support, healing and love in difficult days. For those who have died, May they know the peace in God's sacred keeping. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, we place our prayers before you, spoken and unspoken. In your wisdom and great love, hear and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, may it become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, may it become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. O oh God, may these sacrificial offerings become for you a pure oblation and for us an outpouring of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. For he is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore now and for ages unending, with all the angels we proclaim your glory, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples. He said, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. and resurrection 
you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, the clergy and all who serve you. We remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And our Savior command and for my divine tradition we dare to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world grant us peace. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
O God, may the working of your power increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.